A couple of years ago, when I was fresh out of college, I moved to a new city for my job. I'd never been there before and didn't know anyone at all. It was just myself and my dog Daisy living in my one-bedroom apartment. I met some people at work that were cool and over time became friends with them, but really the first friend that I made when I lived there was another girl named Alex. I first met Alex at a dog park just days after I moved. I took Daisy there, and among the other dogs and owners was Alex. I just remember that we got to talking about dogs and she was really nice. Then, our conversation changed to talking about our jobs and stuff. She said that she worked for some company I can't remember, but seemed to have a lot of the same interests as me. Alex said that we should hang out sometime and gave me her number to text. Over the next couple of weeks, we actually did hang out a few times. Alex came to my apartment twice and we also got coffee on several occasions. She quickly became my best friend in my new city. But one night Alex was going to come over to my apartment. I worked pretty normal hours, but hers were a little more unusual. She told me that she got off of work at seven and then would come over afterwards. I gave her a code to enter my apartment building and then left my door unlocked. I was in the living room watching TV on the couch. I figured that she would be there pretty soon, but as time went on, she didn't arrive yet. So I texted Alex at probably like 7.30, asking her if she was still coming over. I remember she said yes, and that she would text me when she was there. So after that, I just went back to watching TV and figured that she would show up soon. Some more time went by, and I didn't bother to text her again. I really don't know how long it was, but sitting on my couch was becoming very relaxing, and I soon fell asleep. When I woke up, it was probably like 10 p.m., after waking up, I realized how late it was, and I figured that Alex wasn't going to make it. I looked at my phone, but she hadn't texted me anything at all. This was pretty strange. I was sort of mad at her about this, so I didn't bother to text her right away. Plus, I honestly wasn't fully awake yet from my nap on the couch. I decided to just go to sleep because the next day was Friday, and I did have to work in the morning. I walked into my bathroom and took about five minutes to get ready for bed. Then I entered my bedroom next to it in the hallway. I went to my closet to put some clothes away, and as soon as I opened the closet door, I saw Alex. She was like kind of hiding behind some stuff in there, and I jumped back and screamed when I saw her. It was one of the most startling things I've witnessed in my entire life. After a couple of seconds, she ran out of there and left my bedroom. I didn't really know what to do. I left the bedroom and then saw Alex leaving my apartment. She didn't say a word the entire time. I had no idea why she was hiding in my closet. After a few minutes of trying to make sense of it all, I tried calling Alex, but she didn't answer. Then I tried texting her, but she didn't respond to that either. I just went to bed after that and thought that maybe she would give me an explanation the next day, but she didn't. In fact, I never heard from Alex again. To this day, I don't know what she was doing. She obviously arrived at my place sometime when I was asleep. She didn't bother to wake me up, and I clearly didn't hear her getting there. Maybe she was going to rob me or something. I have no idea. Either way, it really creeps me out looking back on it. My old best friend Jason had a number of disorders. Well, I guess if you'd call them that. He had insomnia, he frequently had night terrors, and he battles depression. I'm sure he's got other personal issues that he doesn't really share. All I know is he takes a lot of medication. One day he and his roommate were having serious issues, worse than usual. Jason called me all distressed, saying they just got into a screaming match with one another and it almost got physical and that he needed a place to crash for a couple nights. I told him not a problem. He could sleep on the couch in my apartment for a few nights. When he arrived, I tried pressing him for more details on the fight, like why it happened but he didn't tell me anything. I respected that though. If he didn't want to share personal details like that, I wasn't going to press him further for it. He dropped his backpack full of clothes in the corner of the living room, and he kind of just watched TV and played Call of Duty on my Xbox for most of the day and night. I hung out with him for a bit, but I had my own things to take care of. When I got home, Jason was passed out on the couch under a blanket. I passed him quietly and got ready for bed. I woke up randomly feeling extremely thirsty and the water bottle I kept next to my bed was empty. 
So I quietly went through the living room towards the kitchen. As I passed by the couch, I couldn't help but notice Jason wasn't on it. His bag was still in the corner of the room though, so it's not like he left. Maybe he ran to the bathroom. Either way, I didn't look around for him. I went back to my room and kept the door open a crack. It was a long time that I didn't hear Jason leave in the bathroom though, or simply laying back down on the couch for that matter. So I was going to get back up and look around for him just because I was concerned. But as I got up, I started hearing these ticking or clicking sounds, kind of like a rodent. I looked around the dark room and only then did I notice Jason standing in the corner of my room, arms flat at his sides. I let out a scream and jumped, startled as putting how I felt mildly. Yes, even in this dark room, I was able to realize it was Jason. I threw my pillow at him and yelled, what the actual hell are you doing? He flinched and he stopped making the ticking noises, then walked out of my room in this stiff, creepy manner. I heard him basically collapse onto the couch. I stepped out into the living room to try to talk to him. He didn't answer. I realized he must have been sleepwalking. The next morning I asked him about it, and he said he didn't remember any of it. I asked him if he tends to sleepwalk. He said no, or at least not that he was aware of. But other than that, the day was pretty normal. We chatted and hung out in the living room for a while. Then I had to go out and run some errands. He'd be staying one more night at my place. I once again woke up randomly in the middle of the night. This time I wasn't thirsty, so I don't know what woke me up. But for curiosity's sake, I got up to check if Jason was on the couch. He wasn't. Not again. I called Jason's name pretty loud. He wasn't in the bathroom or the kitchen, nor did he seem to be in my room. I climbed back into bed and tried texting his phone, but nothing delivered so it seemed to be off. I called his name one more time, really loud, and then I heard this disturbing muffled speaking sound. I looked at the closet where it was coming from, and I saw through the six inch opening Jason's face in the dark peeking through the door, his hands over his mouth. I yelled at him full volume to get him out of my closet. He didn't listen. He had to be sleepwalking again. I went to the closet to open it fully. I grabbed his arm and pulled it to get him out of the closet, but as I did that I saw the big carving knife in his hand. I looked at his half lifeless looking face and ran to the bathroom and locked myself in. I considered calling the police, but I didn't. I waited until I heard him go back to the couch, then I ran to my room and locked the door. I didn't understand how sleepwalking could escalate to a level that he'd be picking up weapons. It didn't seem right. Laying in my bed at three in the morning, I DM'd his roommate telling him what just happened and asking him what happened between the two of them. He didn't reply until the next morning. I woke up to three long DMs from his roommate. Basically in short, he told me Jason is a sicko freak who needs help. And he said Jason came into his room with a knife the last night he was there and was standing at the foot of his bed before he tackled him to the floor. He said Jason claimed it was sleepwalking, but his roommate didn't believe it. This made the whole thing even scarier because Jason told me that he doesn't sleepwalk, or not that he's aware of. I asked Jason to leave that day because of what was going on. He did. I think he went back to his mom's house. Last year, I attended a cultural anthropology course at my college. I met the girl next to me. We chatted idly for a few moments, and friendship started when we figured out that we shared a name. She was older than I was by a few years, but somehow, she always seemed less knowledgeable about the world than I ever did. Despite her innocence, we got along great, and soon I called her my second best friend. Then one day, she had the same glasses that I did. I didn't notice, after all. Geeky girls tend to flog towards similar fashion trends, and I continued telling her all about my life. It isn't until now that I understand her unusual silence. She wanted to twist her answers to match mine almost perfectly. I started dating a boy from that class, a mutual friend of ours, and we got along better than she and I did. Two weeks after we got together, she dyed her hair red, emulating my natural color as best as she could. A week and she was dressing like me too. Soon she started calling me her wafu and twin, as though by holding my tighter I wouldn't notice her oddness. I was in love at that point, at least as much as you can, after dating someone for two months, and she expressed the fact that she had been feeling for him the entire time. 
It was then I realized why she had tried to hook up with my previous boyfriend, who I thought it creepy and told me afterwards she was trying to become me. The last straw was when I cut my hair and hers was cut the same way literally seven hours after. My roommate was freaked out, all my friends were freaked out, and I was done. I stopped talking to her as politely as I could, and she got the message fairly quickly. Back in elementary school when I was 10 years old, I met a kid named Tommy. Tommy was new in my school and shortly after the school year started, we quickly became friends. We had a lot in common, like our love for sports and video games. I also found out that he lived about a mile away from me, which was cool. We quickly became almost best friends just weeks after we met. Soon, we would hang out sometimes after school. Usually either he would go to my house or I would go to his. When we hung out, we would play sports out in the yard or video games inside. Not all that long after we became friends though, I did realize that Tommy was not perfect. He seemed to have a bit of a temper and kind of a moody personality personality in general. Some days he would not be very talkative at all, and when I tried talking sports with him or something, he wouldn't say much. Other times, if we were playing video games or sports and I beat him, he would get really mad and stop talking to me for a while. Now this is not that big of a deal for guys. Most of my friends were really competitive and sometimes would get angry, but sometimes with Tommy it felt a little bit disrespectful, I remember. But on top of that, over time I started suspecting that Tommy was stealing things from me. This was back in the day, and I remember that we both had PlayStation 2S as well as PSPs. For those that don't know or remember, PSPs were handheld PlayStation devices that you could get games for and stuff. Well, some of my games started to go missing. At first I chalked it up to myself being disorganized. I would lose things all the time and my room was often really messy. But one time I was playing a game on my PSP kind of a lot that week. I had been putting that game in the same spot on my dresser when I wasn't playing it. After Tommy came over one day, the very next day I couldn't find it. That was the first time I realized he might have been taking my things. We would go to each other's houses quite a bit, so he had a good idea of what games I had, and I had a good idea of what games he had. All in all, I think I lost probably five different games over the span of a month. And that wasn't it. I also lost one of my footballs and a few of my baseball cards. Now I didn't think everything that I had missing was stolen by Tommy. I figured that some things I lost on my own, but I had a strong suspicion that he took some of it. Then one night I went to Tommy's for a sleepover. My mom dropped me off at his house and I remember that it was a Friday night. After I got to his house we stayed up really late playing video games in Tommy's room. Pretty soon it was probably like midnight and Tommy's parents had gone to bed. We were still gaming and I happened to notice a PSP game on Tommy's bookshelf. It was kind of behind a book, but when I looked at it I realized it was one of the same games that I had recently lost, and one that I knew Tommy didn't have. When I saw this I accused him straight to his face. I pointed at it and said this is my game isn't it? Tommy immediately got defensive saying that it wasn't mine and claiming that his parents had just bought it for him recently. Now when either of us got new video games, we would often tell each other about it out of excitement. He hadn't mentioned a word of it. I said to Tommy that lots of my things were going missing recently and I thought that he was to blame. This made him furious. He said some stuff like he wouldn't want my stupid games and he gets his own things. Then he said he didn't want me in his room anymore. I was angry and said fine and walked out. Tommy then walked out of his room and we both went down the hallway. His house had a large sliding glass door in the back leading to the patio. Tommy then opened the door and told me to get out. At this point is when I started to think, wait, what is he doing? I left like he asked me to, and then he slammed the door in my face and locked it. He then covered the window with the blinds so that I couldn't see in. I was now locked outside of Tommy's house at a little bit after midnight. Now Tommy and I had fought several times before as best friends, but it never came to this. We were like brothers, and I didn't think he would do something like kick me out of his house. I stood there, thinking maybe Tommy would cool off and come to his senses. Then he would let me back in. What was I supposed to do? I was 10 years old, had no cell phone back then, and was a mile away from my parents' house, who were also probably asleep. I just stood there wondering what I should do. 
After probably like 10 minutes, there was no sign of Tommy coming back. I knocked on the sliding door a few times and I got nothing in response. It soon became clear that Tommy was not going to let me back in. After standing outside of Tommy's house for probably 20 minutes, I decided that I would try to walk home. I walked down Tommy Street along the sidewalk and went back to my house. It was kind of spooky walking back by myself so late at night as a 10-year-old. Eventually though, after probably 30 minutes, I did make it back to my parents' house. I knocked on the front door, but did not get an answer at first. I figured that they were asleep. I kept knocking as loud as I could. And finally, after like 10 minutes, my dad opened up the front door. He was really confused to see me, but he let me inside and after going in, my mom was up too. I told them what happened and then I went to bed. The next morning, my parents and I looked extremely hard for all the things that I had missing. I only found one of the things that I knew was lost. I'm still, to this day, 100% sure that Tommy stole the games for me. After we searched, my parents called his parents and they were nice. They apologized for him kicking me out of the house and said that they would have a talk with him. But later that day, they called and said that Tommy told them he didn't steal anything and they believed him if he gave him his word. To me, his word meant nothing. Tommy's dad told my dad that he would be glad to buy me another game of the one that I lost, but that wasn't what it was about. I knew that I didn't just lose it, and I wanted Tommy to admit that he stole it from me, but he never did. After the night Tommy kicked me out, I never hung out with him again. I saw him at school many times, but he always ignored me, and I always ignored him. After that, we ended up going to different middle schools and different high schools as well. I'm still angry with them for stealing my things and for kicking me out in the middle of the night. This happened back when I was 11 years old. During that time, I had a best friend named Will. Will and I would hang out all the time and go to each other's houses, and we only lived a little bit less than a mile away from each other. Our sisters were also really good friends with each other and would hang out a lot too. Well, one day my parents were going somewhere for a few hours at night. I think they were going to a restaurant, but I'm not really sure. Anyways, it was a Friday and my brother and I were going to Will's while they were gone. My sister and Will's sister were already hanging out at one of their friend's houses. So my parents dropped me and my brother off at Will's house. My brother, by the way, was seven at the time. We got to Will's at probably like four or five in the afternoon. And I remember that when we got there, Will's mom told us that he was in a bad mood. This was not good because I was hoping that we would be able to play video games or something. He was upstairs in his bedroom and wouldn't come out. So my parents left and then my brother and I went into the living room to hang out. Will's mom then went up to his room to try to get him to come out. In the meantime, my brother and I were playing with the marble maze game. Will's mom soon told us that she couldn't get him out of his room and he didn't want to talk to anyone. Apparently, he was mad because his sister's cat peed on one of his shirts. Anyways, my brother and I were having a good time playing with the marble maze and probably an hour or two went by. At one point, Will left his bedroom, but it was only to shoot his mom with a Nerf gun. Then he went back inside. He didn't even say hi to me and my brother. Sometime later, Will's mom told my brother and I that she had to get my sister and Will's sister they were then going to come back to Will's house. She said that she would be gone for maybe 20 minutes. Then it was just Will, my brother, and me. I'm not really sure where Will's dad was. I decided to go up to try to talk to Will. I went up to his bedroom and knocked on his door, but he didn't answer. I called out asking if I could come in. At first, he didn't respond. Then, after a few seconds, I heard him say no. I went back downstairs after that. It was then that my brother suggested that we go back home. I always had a spare house key on me that I used when I got home from school. Our house was well within walking distance and would take maybe 15 minutes, and I had stayed home by myself a couple of times before to that point. My brother really wanted to play GameCube, so I agreed. My brother and I then left Will's house without telling him or anyone. By now, it was probably like 7 p.m., and the sun was kind of setting. We walked along the sidewalk in the direction of our street. Maybe like halfway into the walk, this car pulled up right next to us. I looked over to see the window rolling down. The driver had a mustache and hat and asked us if we needed a ride. I said no and we were just going home. The guy said okay and then drove off. 
But literally like two minutes later, he was back. He drove up again and stopped on the side of the road once more. This time, he did not ask us if we needed a ride, but told us to get inside of his car. My brother and I found this odd and said no. By this time, we just wanted to get away from the guy and realized that we might be in trouble. The guy actually drove off again, though. We didn't see him for a few minutes. Then when we were entering our street, I saw the car again. It started to pull up alongside of us and slow down. This time I told my brother to run. We both took off and went through the neighbor's yard that we were walking in front of and past their house. Then we went into their backyard and ran through it to the next backyard of the house next door. There we hid behind a tree in the backyard for probably like two or three minutes. My brother and I both knew that that guy was troubled. I looked out to make sure that he was gone and finally he was. Then my brother and I went back home. We were able to make it inside safely and luckily I didn't see the car that followed us after that. My brother and I played GameCube until my parents got back. However, they told us that we should have let Will's mom know that we were leaving. And they were right. She could have given us a ride home or something and we would have avoided that guy altogether. I was just young and didn't really think it through that well though. I'm really glad that my brother and I were able to make it back home safely.